very interesting panel, lots of good ideas. And I'm going to do a little bit of a summary and then head on into a discussion with some observations and desiderata of my own. We, it was kind of interesting that we had two schematic talks and two very personal talks. Natalia Karenko Friesen talked about defining the field, about comparative analysis. She suggested that we do community outreach, and I should point out that uh, she is the editor of the, the Engaged Scholar, which means that she does what she preaches and actually works on a publication that works with the community and also puts the material out. She also stressed working with Ukraine, as did other speakers. Obviously, you know, from what happened yesterday, the, our ties with Ukraine, and as uh, I believe Lyubomir uh, Lutsuk pointed out, the things that happen in Ukraine do impact us, and not just us, but the entire community. The other schematic thing was done by Andriy Makuch, who was actually nice enough to send me his stuff in advance, which is why I could run out for a minute. And uh, he talked about the history of the field. Very nice. If you can get his, he, uh, his publication, he's got a, not publication, but his paper, he's got a lot of things listed. And then he talked about desiderata, both in terms of history and in terms of uh, areas to investigate, namely the urban environment. And then we had Lyubomir Lutsuk and Roman Yarenyuk who gave us much more of a personal experience. I was really quite pleased to see how important uh, Lyubomir Lutsuk's personal experiences and the interviews that he did because I am a professional interviewer and I know that other people in this room have been with us on interview projects, that this was really something that made a difference in his life as an academic and as a human being. Roman Yarenyuk told us about St. Andrew's College and the work that it's done. And you know, again, a lot of the things that he himself and his group experienced and how it impacted his research and the hopes for the future. From all of this, I can draw a number of desiderata, which fortunately very much coincide with my desiderata. And you know, obviously, if you do not agree with my desiderata and my, our panelists also, they can add and correct as we go along. One of the things that, again, I will stress interviews uh, Andriy Makuch pointed out the importance of doing people during the Second World War. It is uh, the, well, the immigration that came after the Second World War. It is a group that is elderly, that if we are going to interview, we must interview now. I know that Bogdan Kordan has worked on the refugee experience. One of the things that I would like to add from what I see, and I know that actually from knowing the work of a lot of these people that they do, although it may not have come out as much, is that we do actually reach out to others and well beyond the Ukrainian community. And our work does impact other fields, like Natalia Kananko Friesen was talking about, and I believe others also, the diversity of, if you're going to call Ukrainian Canadian studies, well, it's ethnography and history and geography and many fields. But one of the things that we can impact now that's going on now is the refugee experience. I would love to have a big study of Ukrainian, the refu Ukrainian refugee experience. I think that what we know from our, the kind of work that we do with Ukrainians, including Ukrainians in Canada, 
And I was absolutely delighted when I was offered this job in Edmonton because it allowed me to do field work, which is my, my love. Anyway, but th things like that, we can impact other fields. We can impact like global scholarship. We can impact Canadian society and of course Ukrainian society. One of the things that came up a, a number of times is that we should work together, perhaps having a conference of all of the centers. Wonderful idea, and I would very much endorse that idea. One thing that I should point out is that we do work together already in many ways. It so happens, I'm gonna, and I'll kind of uh, well, I don't know, whatever it is, toot my own horn, and I would also like to thank my colleagues. I work on the Sanctuary Project, which is documentation of sacral heritage, primarily in Saskatchewan and Alberta. And lo and behold, we have worked with Natalia and her students, not only our students, but Natalia's students, one of whom is sitting in the back over there, yes. We hope, you know, I know that we parallel with the work that's done by Roman Yerinyuk. So that sort of cooperation between centers exists and should very definitely be taken further. Not just with Sanctuary Project, but with other projects as well. I believe several people I know Natalia did mention databases. I know that uh, uh, Roman mentioned, data, uh, mentioned archiving at the University of Manitoba. Yesterday, a lot of people talked about things like the digital world. Well, you know, speaking of sharing, w linking our various databases is kind of a natural. I will tell you that from Sanctuary, we have a photo database which at present has about 200,000 images. 200,000, that's the functioning part now. It is not open, as I was telling Bishop David, for reasons of security. As in, we don't want to uh, let everybody and his uncle know where the 100-year-old gorgeous, you know, uh, tomes or gorgeous Ivanhili are, okay. By the same, we also have something right now, how many hours of sound do we have? Yeah, we have about 150 hours of sound. I'm the interviewer on the project, digitized. And that, that uh, database should be open shortly. I know Natalia has uh, letters that she's been collecting and also processing. So to link the kind of material that we have to the kind of material that Natalia has, and I know Roman has a very interesting material that is on the documentation of sacral heritage, heritage that they've done in Manitoba in the past and are also planning to do in the future. And speaking of the sanctuary project, I must bring up the name of my two dear colleagues without whom I could never have done this, and that's uh, John Paul Hemka and Francis Swarepa. And I bring them up also for another reason, and that is to encourage, again, collaboration. It so happens that John Paul Hemka, Francis Swarepa, and I are very, very different people with very, very different interests. And the fact that we are very different is exactly the reason for our success. Francis does archives. We could never survive without her. John Paul's interested in iconography and photography. I'm the interviewer. If we did not do different things, we could not do a project of this scope. So as, again, to work together on doing different things, different areas. Similarly, on the topic of different things, and this came up in various ways, that's to work with other communities, not just the Ukrainian community. I was in Folaire, 
which is northern Alberta, doing interviews. And I was interviewing an elderly Ukrainian lady. And the elderly Ukrainian lady needed some help from her daughter. And the daughter was married to a very nice Frenchman who said something that I will never forget. He said, you know, the Ukrainians did not exist in isolation. We would never have survived had it not been for the French, the Danish, the Norwegians, and whoever, whatever other communities we interacted with. First Nations. I, what? First Nations. Yeah, no, I was about to say that uh, I know in Manitoba, the 125th anniversary was done in conjunction with First Nations. So the kind of work that we do, I both would urge collaborative research and the kind of, and people have said doing things like ethnic studies, immigrant studies, et cetera, that is also something where we could work with other groups. My desire has always been, and I will probably end here, although you know there are many, many interesting things to say, but my desire has always been not just to work with other groups, not just to do the community research. And I'm a folklorist. I want to work with the folk, with the regular people. It's also been this. And this here I'll come back to the digital material. It's to be, for Ukrainian studies, to do something so cool that everybody else will want to do it be it in the realm of technology or in the realm of investigating diasporas or in the realm of interacting with a home country, sharing knowledge, sharing data. I want us to do something so cool that you'll get all sorts of people from all sorts of ethnicities wanting to do Ukrainian studies. I teach 130 students. Believe me, they're not all Ukrainian. But it is something that it's a, a cool methodology, a cool approach. They learn about Ukrainian studies. I learn about their culture. We exchange information. And so my, my call on various levels is for cooperation and sharing. And thank you for the, to the panel for setting all this up and to Yaris for chairing all of this. Thank you.